Welcome to the Discovering Emacs podcast. This is episode four, and today we're taking a look at Emacs's white space mode and discussing how we can simplify its configuration to make it more applicable for most use cases. Introduction. Emacs has by far the most comprehensive white space rendering capabilities I have come across in any text editor. It has the basics that you would expect, such as rendering spaces, tabs, and line breaks, but it also offers much more. It provides white space reports, performs cleanup operations, and gives us fine-grained control of what types of white space to render depending on the context. For example, we can highlight spaces that are in front of tabs, long lines, big indentations, and much more. But unfortunately, with Emacs's white space mode being so feature rich, it can be misunderstood by new users, coming from other text editors. As by default, enabling white space mode will render a wide array of white space criteria that at first sight seems strange and confusing. And the end result is usually, even in my personal experience, to just keep white space mode disabled, when in reality I would much rather have white space visible at all times. And that's the goal for today's episode, to make white space mode more applicable to new Emacs users and for general use cases. Specifying a white space style. We can define what types of white space should be shown by specifying the white space style. We do this by modifying the configuration option white space style. It takes a list consisting of the types of white space that you would like to visualize. There's a large number of types available but our goal here is to just show the bare minimum. If you want to see all the available options, you can press Ctrl H V and type white space style. So to keep things simple, I recommend you set the white space style configuration list to include the following. Face, spaces, empty, tabs, new line, trailing, space mark, tab mark, and new line mark. With just this configuration change, the behavior of Emacs's white space mode will become much more familiar in regards to how other text editors visualize white space. Dealing with white space coloring issues. Seeing as white space mode is so seldomly used, most themes don't define proper white space coloring. Generally speaking, you want white space to appear in a faded manner to be visible but not distracting. To help you with potential theming issues, I included some Emacs code that you can place inside of your configuration file to help easily adjust the white space color by a certain percentage. Specifying what symbols should represent white space. There's a configuration option named white space display mappings that you can use to specify what Unicode character should be used to visualize a specific white space. It takes a two-dimensional list where each inner list consists of a kind, which can either be tab mark, space mark, and new line mark, after which you specify the character you want to replace. And lastly, you specify a vector that holds the characters to use for the replacement purpose. You can specify multiple vectors to act as fallbacks in case a Unicode symbol isn't available. I'll share my configuration as an example in the show notes. Enabling white space mode globally. We can enable white space mode globally by calling global white space mode. The downside of this is that white space will be rendered inside of every Emacs buffer and that is not really necessary. For example, I don't want white space to be rendered inside shall occur or iBuffer windows. Luckily, there's an option available to control which modes should enable white space mode when global white space mode is enabled. And it's aptly named white space global modes. This option takes a list of major mode symbol names that when matched will enable white space mode. We can also negate the list by prefixing it with not causing global white space mode to be disabled for the listed major mode symbols. And that's the way I configured it myself. Making use of cleanup actions. One benefit of having white space mode enabled globally is that we can take advantage of the white space actions feature. This feature allows us to automatically run a series of actions 
after a buffer is written. Today we are only really interested in cleanup actions. These cleanup actions will perform different operations based on the defined whitespace style. For our defined whitespace style, the following actions will be performed on cleanup. It will remove all empty lines at the beginning and end of the buffer. It will remove all trailing tabs and spaces. If you want to see all the available cleanup operations in relation to different whitespace styles, you can press Ctrl H F and type whitespace cleanup. Conclusion. Emacs's whitespace mode has a great degree of flexibility and power. It gives you control over what types of whitespace should be given attention, how they should be visualized and cleaned. If you have been avoiding whitespace mode in Emacs, I hope this episode might encourage you to give it a try. And as always, you can find a link to the episode's detailed show notes in the description of this episode. And if you have some suggestions, corrections or need help, please feel free to open up a new discussion in the discussions section of this podcast's repository. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for the next episode of Discovering Emacs.